Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango, November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today we're talking about the Zygu X5105. The Zygu X5105 is an HF plus 6 meter QRP radio with a very similar form factor as the Elecraft KX2. It's designed as an ultralightweight HF plus 6 meter portable radio designed to stay out in the field as long as you are. If you stick with me a while, I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. To be quite honest, there's already a number of the standard ham radio YouTube videos on the Zygu X5105. So rather than covering all of the same things those videos have already covered, I'm going to focus on the features I think my subscribers would appreciate. Let's start this discussion by examining the best features of this radio and why someone might buy this radio over, for example, the Yaesu FT818. Finally, we're going to finish up with the features which are most important for operators who are focused on extended field communications or off-grid communications with their amateur radio gear. So let's start off by covering the basic functionality this radio offers us. The X5105 has a general coverage receiver covering 0.5 MHz to 55 MHz. Of course, this also covers amateur radio and shortwave listening bands. Now, if you like, you can change the behavior of the receiver showing you either amateur radio bands or amateur radio and shortwave bands as well. Enabling or disabling this functionality will allow you to focus purely on amateur radio bands or open up your receiver, for example, to receive weather facts or shortwave radio, things like that. Now, as far as the modes go, we have AM, we have lower sideband, upper sideband, CW and reverse CW, as well as narrowband FM. Now, even though data isn't specifically mentioned in the modes, data communications can be carried out by connecting your computer to the accessory port on the side of the radio, then selecting narrowband FM, AM, USB, or LSB for your data communications. We'll go more into data communications with this radio later in the video. Now this radio also has some features which are extremely important for weak signal work. Now for those of us who have used radios like the Yaesu FT817 or the Yaesu FT818, we understand the radio doesn't come with any digital filters, it doesn't come with any notch. Uh, and if we want to add these things to the radio, we have to do it with aftermarket parts. This brings me to the first reason why someone might buy the X5105 over the Yaesu FT818. So the X5105 already has variable band with filters built in. The user can adjust the low end and the high end of these filters as well as the bandwidth. The X5105 also has a notch filter built in. The user can adjust the position of the notch filter in the waterfall as well as its bandwidth. The X5105 also has digital signal processing built in, so there's no need to add it as an external aftermarket module later on. And of course, it also has a noise blanker, preamp, and attenuator. So if we're only talking about the Yaesu FT818 as an HF plus 6 meter radio, the Zygu X5105 already has variable bandwidth filters built in. It already has the notch filter. It already has DSP. These are all things which need to be added aftermarket or as options for the Yaesu FT818. This is extremely important to keep in mind when you're comparing the price of the FT818 and the Zygu X5105. On this topic, there are two other options found on the Zygu X5105, which we don't have on the Yaesu FT818. That's an EQ and speech compression. The EQ allows us to adjust the fidelity of our outgoing voice signal. This means we can uniquely adjust the bass, the mid-range, and the treble of our outgoing voice signal. 
This works hand in hand with the speech compression which is also built in to the Zygu X5105. If you're operating voice communications with the QRP radio, speech compression and the EQ are two of your very best friends. So now let's move on to the more pragmatic or more utilitarian features of this radio. These features will definitely be most interesting for preparedness and the off-grid field radio operator. Now the very first feature I'd like to introduce you to is a daylight readable display. The display can be seen and read in any level of sunlight or darkness. It's got user accessible controls to control the contrast and the backlight is fully adjustable. If that weren't enough, the backlight can also be switched off if it's not needed. So turning on, off or adjusting the backlight also adjusts the level of the backlit buttons on the front of the radio. The adjustable backlit buttons are another utilitarian touch I think most of us will appreciate. If you're anything like me, you'll also be concerned about the additional current drain by having such nice to have features. But the current consumption on this radio remains pretty reasonable. So, an easy to read display in both daylight and darkness, along with backlit buttons. Doesn't sound too bad. Let's move on to my next point. Now's a good time to start talking about power. The Zygu X5105 has an internal 3,800 milliamp hour battery pack. It also has a voltage input of 9 to 15 volts. We use that for powering the X5105 externally or for charging and powering it when connected to an external supply. An external power source like a small solar generator as you've seen on my channel or for example, the Powerfilm Lightsaber Max, which I use to power all of my QRP radios in the field. The Zygu X5105 also makes it very simple to charge its internal battery without removing the battery from the enclosure. Let's quickly go through the process. The first thing we do is enable charging from our settings menu. Once we enabled charging, we can go ahead and save that setting and then turn off the radio. Once we turn off the radio, we can go ahead and plug in our external power source. In this case, I'm taking power from one of my solar generators here in my ham shack. When you give the radio external DC, a charging screen is going to open. It'll tell you the voltage of the internal battery, the voltage of the external battery, and whether or not it's charging or full. You don't have to wait for that screen, but anyway, at that point, you can go ahead and start up your radio. Now there is one more feature related to charging external power and the state of your internal battery. That's the little bar graph you see on the upper right hand side of the screen. The operator can choose between having the voltage displayed or having a percentage of the battery life remaining. This is entirely up to the operator. At the end of the day, having the flexibility with all of these powering and charging options allow us a certain amount of flexibility for off-grid field communications that we don't have with other radios, for example, the KX2 from Elecraft. Now, staying with the topic of power for a moment, let's go ahead and take a look at the current consumption. As we might expect, current consumption was greatest with the backlight on maximum and charging the internal battery enabled. As we cycle through the backlight settings, we can see a corresponding measurement higher and lower in the upper left hand corner of the screen where we have the current consumption meter. We can also see on 40 meters band using JS8 call at 5 watts output, we have a maximum current draw of 2.04 amps. That leaves us with a minimum current draw when we're not charging and the backlit display is turned off of 300 milliamps and a maximum current draw while charging and with the backlit display at maximum of about 700 milliamps. When we're using the internal battery or the battery is full and using an external supply, 
current draw is anywhere between 300 milliamps and 410 milliamps. Now for those of us who are trying to simplify our communications gear in the field, another feature related to that is an internal antenna tuner. With a built-in antenna tuner on the X5105, I get to use a broadband antenna system. This offers me a lot of flexibility. I've chosen the Chameleon Impost 2.0 to use with the X5105. Now this doesn't mean we can't use a resonant antenna with the X5105, we certainly can. The broadband antenna offers me some flexibility I need for my personal mission. So now let's talk about operating digital modes with the X5105. The simplest way I have found to operate data modes with the X5105 is using the accessory port on the side of the radio. You can find the diagram for the accessory port in the user manual included with your radio. If you're making your own cable, which I suggest, all you'll need is the audio in, audio out, and ground. If you're using an audio interface like the ZLP or the Signalink USB, you can also attach the push to talk. Now, if you've ever watched any of my Raspberry Pi videos, you'll recognize this sovereign USB audio interface. Because the X5105 has a built-in Vox circuit, we can take audio in and out directly from the sovereign between the radio and the laptop or tablet. If you don't mind changing the frequency manually, it makes a pretty clean single wire setup. Now to enable external audio for data communications, we have to enable the Vox and select the correct input and output from the menus in the X5105. On my firmware version, I had to change the mic Vox setting to internal. I had to change line in and line out both to on, and I had to change the push to talk setting to normal. Now once I had those settings dialed in, I plugged in my mini dim cable on one end, I plugged in the audio in and out into the Sovereign USB audio interface, then plugged that into my laptop. By the way, before I forget, you need to remember to turn off the notifications for that sound card. This way we're not transmitting notifications like email notifications and things like that out over the air. Now I decided not to use cat control because I wanted to have a single wire interface between my laptop or tablet and this radio. In reality, the only thing we're using cat control for is the push to talk. Since JS8 Call, WSJTX, and FL Digi are all sitting on a single frequency while you're operating those data modes. So here you see the X5105 with my Lenovo Yoga laptop operating WSJTF with FT8. There's the Sovereign USB audio interface and the single cable coming out of it and going into the audio IO of the X5105. And actually, this is it. This is the entire station as set up for data modes. So there's a couple of more features I want to tell you about. First of all, there's the built-in heatsink. Now, quite often, this radio is compared to the Elecraft KX2, which has an overheating problem when doing data modes over 5 watts. The X5105 comes standard with a large heatsink built in, and in fact, the entire body of the radio dissipates heat. With that said, I've tried my darndest to get this radio to fail by running it on FT8 and JS8 call at a full 5 watts for hours and hours and hours at a time. Now, I'm definitely a guy who loves Japanese radios, but you know what? I don't think I'm going to give up this radio too easily. All right, there's two more things I want to share with you about this radio. These are pragmatic things that the utilitarian or the off-grid operator might appreciate. There's only one rotary encoder on this radio and it's very low profile. What this means is the chances of breaking this rotary encoder are extremely low. Now we've all seen radios with the larger, longer rotary encoders that stick out. And when broken, they're often very expensive and difficult to replace. 
So someone has really sat down and thought about the design of this radio. So the last feature I'll tell you about is the front firing speaker and built-in microphone. Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November Stroke Papa. So quite often I might have a pair of headphones with me that I plug into the radio and listen because usually the speakers are not pointed directly at me. I also usually carry a microphone because none of the radios I've had previously have had a built-in microphone. Now initially I was quite apprehensive about it, but I no longer carry the headphones and I no longer carry the handheld microphone. And again, I have to say, someone put a heck of a lot of thought into the design of this radio. Now honestly, there's many other things I could tell you about this radio, but let's do things a little bit differently. If you have a question, a specific question about this radio, please leave it as a comment and I'll answer it as a blog post or in the comments. You can also just tell me what you think or leave some feedback. The only thing I ask is that you be polite. All right, guys, until next time. If you're supporting this channel through Patreon, PayPal, or simply sharing my content, you're absolutely magnificent and I couldn't do it without you. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, leave me a comment and a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.